looking dumb and saying things that were inappropriate. And the, the, what I said that was inappropriate got back to um, someone in power and basically they flexed. Today's hot cup of tea is all about Adina Howard, the 90s queen who gave us the unforgettable anthem, Freak Like Me. I'm that kind of girl. Adina herself is spilling the deets. And between a messy love triangle that had us in a chokehold and a real life tale of loose lips sinking ships, this one is scalding. A lot of the egos to get in the way and were kind of going through it about a guy. Adina Howard was a whole mood. Girl was owning her sexuality and telling women to flaunt their freak flags high, like a queen on a mission. Her songs were anthems, honey. One minute she's breaking boundaries, and the next, it's radio silence, louder than a library after closing time. Girl, what happened to the fearless firecracker? Stick around while we take a look at the juicy details. Adina Marie Howard, born in November 1973, was raised in Grand Rapids, Michigan, alongside her mother and three younger sisters. Guess what? Her idol was none other than fellow Michigan gal, Madonna. Adina says that back in the day, she didn't think she could carry a tune to save her life. But plot twist, her mom had eagle ears and knew what was up. She heard that star potential a mile away. She marched Adina straight to the church choir and made sure she got enough solo to put her in the spotlight. Talk about a supportive queen. Who knows? Maybe those early gospel nights are what gave Adina the confidence to eventually own to her sexy sound and bless us with anthems like Freak Like Me. Fast forward to the mid-90s, and Adina catches the eye of a manager-producer, Levio Harris who saw the star potential shimmering under all that Michigan sparkle. Harris helped her land a record deal, and Adina was ready to set the music world on fire. And that's exactly what she did with her February 1995 debut album, Do You Wanna Ride? Do you wanna ride for me? We gotta say, that ride was bumpy and oh so fun. We're talking major jams and collabs. Her debut single, Freak Like Me, had us all bumping and grinding. Homegirl did not come to play, and a debut album with a song that hits platinum was a great way to say exactly that. I recorded Freak Like Me. I didn't know what was a hit, what wasn't a hit. I just get into the studio, record the song. Freak Like Me wasn't just a song. It was a full-on party anthem. Adina wasn't shy about owning her sex appeal, and let me tell you, she did it with more sass than a drag queen on payday. She has her own definition of freak. Why do I call myself a freak? Because I am. I'm a freak all day, every day. <laughs> all day. This song turned up the heat and broke down walls. It was like single ladies before Beyonce even blessed us with her presence. Little Kim, Foxy Brown, Nicki Minaj. Open the doors for women talking about what they like, what they want to explore in bed. Well, she was owning her sexuality. She was playing the same game. Well, guess what? Turns out Hollywood took notice. Adina's music wasn't just topping charts. It was soundtracking major motion pictures. That's right. Her songs were the soundtrack to some major on-screen drama and action. Adina's music was adding a whole new level of fierceness to the silver screen. Now that's what we call a true multi-talented queen. This sister is no one-hit wonder, and so work begins on her second album. Um, because it's a tattoo that I have. I think it's very appropriate for that. Because I am a fantasy. <laughs> Adina's second album, Welcome to Fantasy Island, was gearing up to be full-on sonic earthquake. That album title seemed like a warning shot. Adina was about to take us on a wild ride and break all the rules. I know you're wondering, why didn't this album break the internet? The real tea is, that album never saw the light of day. Adina spilled some serious tea on herself in an interview with Unsung. And apparently, Wanye Morris, the lead vocalist for Boys to Men, was juggling two loves at the same time. Adina and Moesha star Brandy Norwood. Did someone say the boy is mine? Cause we hear ya. Why you met Adina and it's on and poppin'. When you meet Adina, it's on and poppin'. Word on the street is that Brandy's song, The Boy Is Mine, was a diss for Adina. Oh, boy is mine. 
Can you imagine the drama? Two fierce and talented ladies vying for the attention of the same smooth singer. Who was the main chick and who was the side chick? It had reality TV gold written all over it, honey. We're talking cross wires, heartbreak anthems, and enough label exec headaches to fill a medicine cabinet. This love triangle might just be the missing piece of the puzzle when it comes to understanding Adina's career chef. It becomes more interesting when you add the juicy detail that Adina and Brandy were label mates at Atlantic Records, basically like cousins with Adina's label East West. We know what you're wondering. Did it cause a major meltdown? Brandy being the more established artist at the time, did the label take sides? It's becoming way too much. I need to have control. Well, we can't confirm that gist, but here's some real tea. Faster than gossip at a church picnic, news of the Brandy, Wanye, Adina love triangle traveled and landed right on the desk of the label boss lady, Sylvia Roan. Now Sylvia tells Adina to ditch both the drama and the player Wanye and focus on those chart-topping hits. But honey, Adina was having none of it was an exchange of words for Adina not to focus on Wanye because we're focusing on the second record and to focus mainly on that and not him. Seems like that outspoken nature that made her a star also landed her in hot water. In an interview with Wendy Williams, Adina fired back with some major shade directed at Brandy and label boss Sylvia. Something very inappropriate about the head of the label. And she pulled up the emergency brake, shut everything down. Big mistake, honey. Sylvia Rome went from label exec to scorned boss faster than you can say career meltdown. Being young and dumb and saying things that were inappropriate, and the, the, what I said that was inappropriate got back to um, someone in power, and basically they flexed. Adina's second album release date got pushed back further than most people push back their dentist appointments. Let's just say that shade throwing put her album on permanent ice. You got two queens in one castle. The one who writes the check is going to win. By the time things could have thawed out, the music biz had moved on to the next shiny new toy. New artists were popping up like mushrooms after a rainstorm, and Adina, well, she was left on the sidelines with a mic in her hand and a dream deferred. It's a harsh reality of the industry. You snooze, you lose. And in Adina's case, all that shade throwing cost her major momentum. Music industry, I've been in the industry since I was 21. And it was, some, it was really all that I knew. And when I went through the changes of not being able to get a deal from my foolishness back in the day, uh, it, it just... Adina gets iced out by the music bit. The industry, I refuse to allow the industry to make me. Right. I refuse to feel like, you know, this. it was the only thing that I could do. Singing was the only thing that I could do, that this is the only way I'm going to be relevant. Um, I'm relevant to those who are important to me, mm -hmm. and that's all that matters. So when I walked away and I was blackballed, it was nothing for me. It was just like, okay, this is part of the journey. Let's keep it moving. What's next? But hey, this queen ain't afraid to reinvent herself. She ditched the mic for a whisk and traded chart-topping hits for sizzling dishes. I have my degree in culinary arts. I have my associate's degree. Okay. And the reason why I got my associate's degree in culinary arts is because I needed to take control of my life. That's right. Adina went from belting out sexy anthems to becoming a full-fledged chef, complete with a culinary degree. And every time I fed somebody, that was one of the, the consensus was, Adina, you need to do this for a living. You need to sell your pizzas, you need to sell your salsa, you need to sell your food. Who needs platinum records when you can have perfectly plated gourmet meals and fine dining? In 2011, Adina married Sherman Jordan. She is also a proud mother. But buckle up for a little TMI because it turns out her nickname might have played a role in her real life love life. And in 2017, they got a divorce. And the reason is, well, let's just say her freak flag flew a little too high for her husband. Reportedly, Adina says they divorced because she, well, wanted a lot of action in the bedroom. Like, three times a day kind of a lot. She considers herself a freak when it comes to intimacy, and it looks like her expectations weren't exactly met. 
Her ex-husband, bless his heart, was apparently no match for her energy levels. The poor guy thought he was the freak until he met Adina. What's Adina been up to lately? Remember Adina's long-lost album, Welcome to Fantasy Island? Well, guess what? It finally escaped the vault and blessed our ears in February 2021. But that wasn't all. Fast forward to April 2022, and Adina dropped a brand new single called Keep Looking, a bop that had us all grooving once again. And just in case you thought she was done, she threw in a remix in July. But wait, there's more. Turns out Adina's explored more of her talent for acting. She filmed a new drama called False Prophets in November 2023. And let's not forget her entrepreneurial spirit. In July 2023, she launched her own wine, Indelible, proving she can quench out thirst for music, food, and delicious beverages. With an estimated net worth of one and a half million, it sure looks like Adina's been busy, 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 and we're here for it. I guess we can all agree that Adina may not be topping the Billboard charts anymore, but she's definitely serving up something delicious. Adina's found her happily ever after, and it involves good food, good music, and good wine, and maybe even some Hollywood drama. We love a multi-talented queen who knows how to keep things spicy. Adina's story is like a reality show with extra drama. But hey, at least it's real. It's a reminder that showbiz isn't always sunshine and rainbows. But some folks, like Adina, can weather any storm and come out stronger on the other side. Through all the drama, the industry shade, and even a short-lived marriage, Adina Howard has proven she's one tough cookie. This queen keeps it real spilling the tea about her journey to inspire all you boss babes out there.